to the word of God. Amen. It's kind of warm in here this morning. John, the fourth chapter, verses four. And it's a little different this morning, but we're going to trust the Lord that he's going to lead us. Amen. John, the fourth chapter, verses four. And I'm going to skip down to verse seven. Then I'm going to skip down to verse nine through ten. Then 20 to 24. Amen. And it reads, and he must needs go through Samaria. And verse 7 said, There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. Verses 9 and 10 said, Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked him, asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Verse 20, verses 20 through 24, he says, Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour will come. When ye shall neither in this mountain nor in your nor yet in Jerusalem worship this the Father. Ye worship ye know, know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You may have your places. Amen. Amen. And I like to talk today about what happens when the church becomes inoperative. <laughs> now, if you don't know what that means, of course, you know I'm not giving definitions. And the word inoperative means not working or taking effect, not being effective. So what happens, hey God, what happens when the church becomes inoperative? Now, we don't read this story a lot of times. We've heard about it, the preacher. It's a very familiar passage. Uh, uh, we've heard this story about the, Jesus meeting a woman at the well. We know how Jesus asked for a drink, and the Samaritan woman wanted to point out to him how they didn't even have any dealings with each other. So she was worried more worried about how we don't fool with you. We don't, we don't, you know, we don't get down like that. But Jesus, Jesus offered her, he tells her about the living water. It never caused him, it never, he didn't cease the opportunity to offer her life. Amen. Amen. So he sees the moment and the opportunity to offer her life. Now, I want you to understand that Jesus didn't have to go to, through Samaritan. He didn't have to go through Samaritan to get to where he was going. But he had a need. He had a must need, as my husband would say. My husband preached a sermon. I have a must. There is a must need. It was a must need that he go through Samaritan. Amen. And there are some places that God wants us to go, but we don't want to take the must need. We don't want to go in different directions because we want everything comfortable. Amen. So for God know, Jesus knew that he had a need to go through Samaritan. That's just like if I say, well, I need to go to Bay Springs and I live in Paulden. That there is no need for me to circle around in Hollaburg to go through law to come back up through Bay Springs. Amen? I, but I, there was a need for me to go through Hollaburg and go through law and I can take my route and continue on to Bay Springs. Amen? There was a need for God to go through Samaritan. Amen? A lot of times, you know, we don't, we don't understand. We always want things to come easy. We want the comfortable route. Amen? And when things get a little heavy, we want to uh, renew. Amen. And we want to. We tend to. We tend to take. We, we tend to take back. We, we tend to step back. I'm guilty of that. Amen. I, I, I don't want all that drama. And a lot of times we have to go do some things to be effective. Amen. And see, when the church becomes inoperative, it loses its effect. It's not taking effect anymore because you want everything comfortable, pleasant, and pleasing. Amen? Now, that's all right, and that's good, but there was a must need that Jesus had to go through Samaritan. Amen? Come on and give God some glory. So, a lot of times, we don't want to, we don't want to face 
miss the difficult things. We don't want the we don't want the homework. But there's a need. There's a need. There's a lesson. There's growth in homework. There's maturity. You know, iron sharpens iron. Amen. And when we pour into people, there's a need. There's a there's a work. There's a mission. There's a goal. So we got to pour into somebody for the work to be completed. But if we don't put the work in, we become inoperative. Come on and give God some glory. Uh, me and my husband, we was walking the other day, and we were just talking. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a founder of God put in my heart to empower young women and uh, just to be a blessing. And, and I don't go in there uh, being hush mouth, but I be very transparent. Amen. As God lead and God give me the things to say. And a lot of times I'm faced with you know, those hard and sticky, you know, I don't know, I want everything comfortable, let me just keep it real. But there's a need for me to get all different types of women. There's a need for me to talk to all, and everything don't come easy. And a lot of times we want to we wanna put off a, a bag up, and we got to do the work, but we don't want to do the work. And if you don't know what work means, work is activity involving mental our physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose or result. So there was a purpose for Jesus to go through Samaritan, amen? And he got some results, amen? So when you go and you do what God has appointed you to do, you become operative, amen? Come on and give God some glory. And another meaning of the word is a task, a task to be undertaken, something a person our, our thing our thing has to do. There's something that you has to you, that you have to do, and it won't get done until you do it. You're pointing the finger. They can do it. They're better than me because we feel inadequate. But God has called you to do it. But you want me to do it? Ain't for me to do it. It ain't. It is not my assignment. Amen. But it's for you. Everybody have a purpose, and everybody got a ministry. Amen. There are some people that you can win. So stop feeling like you're inadequate. Amen. That's even in your home, mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers. You feel like you're not adequate enough to be the good mother. You feel like, hey, God, hallelujah. You feel like you're not adequate to be the good father. But you are designed. God created you. He made you to be the best you, as Pastor would say. Be the best you. Amen. And we tend to back up. You know, what if God backed up from you and stopped? He should have been stopped on me. I, I told the Lord, I said, God, I'm so tired of telling you I'm sorry. Oh, God, Jesus. You know, a lot of people are waiting to get it right before I get right. You'll never get it right. I call myself right. I'm still crying out to the Lord. Lord, I'm, I messed up, God. It's not that you have obtained, but you are obtaining. You're pressing toward the Lord of a higher calling. See, it goes beyond you. God's strength is made perfect in you. You are weak. I tell somebody I'm the weakest link. But God's strength is made perfect in me. Hey, God. It's not about me. I, I, my friend girl preached a sermon one time. It's not about you, boo. Take the light, take the, the light off of you. Take the spotlight off of you because it ain't about you. But it's about Jesus. Hallelujah. And Jesus come today to offer you living water. This water is what keeps you. This water, you'll never get thirsty, hallelujah, because it always quenches the thirst, amen. But you'll never understand it unless you're operating by the Spirit of God, coming into God's glory. It was necessary for Jesus to go through Samaritan. And I know you've heard it preached a different way many times, but God gave it to me like this. It was a must need for him to go through Samaritan. I don't want to go through Hollywood. I don't want to go through law. I don't want to go through Hansburg. But there is something you have to meet on your way to glory. Hallelujah. And the work is not going to get done. It's going to get forfeit if you don't do it. And God will put somebody else in your place to do it and you'll sit back and watch and watch somebody. You'll watch somebody else do what you're supposed to be doing. Been there. Woo. That don't feel good sitting in the seat and you know you're supposed to be doing something. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some glory. But you ain't no me, 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 and me, and you, you, you to do it. But God said, I want you to do it. I want you to be operative. Amen. And the only way that you're going to be operative if you, the hour coming, and now is when the true worshipers shall 
worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to work in him. This is who God is looking for. God is seeking for some true worship of amen. It's not about you. It's not about what you do. But God is seeking some true, wholeheartedly worship of amen. Come on and give God some glory. Hallelujah. There is an assignment that comes with the task. There is some work. It's not about you singing all the time. It's not about you preaching all the time. It's not about you to you the main usher at the church. It's not about you to head treasure. But it's about being operative. Amen. It's about worshiping God in everything that you do and say. Jesus. And the only way that you're going to do that is in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. How are you going to worship him if you don't know who he is? Come on, you go first. 
She pulled us in all the sister Charlene. Me and Lakia was praying. I prayed, she prayed. We did just like she instructed. And so me and Lakia, after we prayed, after we said amen, God was done. We were just, and you know what, God, I just thank you for She said, Momo, stop. Look, Mo, Mama, stop. I said, I said, amen, amen. Yeah, amen, we're done. Give it to God and go to sleep at night. Go down to 
verse 10 and it reads, he said, nor strip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet styles, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who is worthy, and there abide ye go hence. And when ye come into the house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come unto it. But, be, but if it be not worthy, let your peace return unto it. Amen. So God, ooh, it's kind of hot, y'all. God gave us power. Now notice when he called the disciples, they were disciples. He called for them. They were, they were disciples. And then when he gave them power, they have a new name. They have became apostles. And we all know what the word apostle means. They were sent. So we are sent to do a job. Amen. We are sent. And if we get anything, let anything hinder us of getting away, we're going to come in operative. Come on and give God some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said, Whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when you depart out of the house of that city, shake off the dust of your feet. Shake it off. The dirt ain't even worth up the pity. It ain't even worth to be upon your feet. Shake it off. Don't worry about who ain't hearing you or what they ain't saying. You're more worried about who they, they ain't hearing me. No, they ain't. They need to be hearing God. They need to be hearing God. But shake it off. Shake it off and go forward. Do not become inoperative. Amen. What happens when the body of Christ becomes inoperative? You know what happens? It gets stagnated. It ceases to flow or move. That's the meaning of it. It ceases developing. It becomes inactive, dull. Woo. It has no effect. It has no effect. You let someone sit here and we never turn it on. Never turn on. You don't never turn the water on. It's there. I got plenty of water. I got Jesus. That's, uh, you, got, you got people, listen, I got Jesus. Yeah, you got him, but what you doing with him? What are you doing with him? You're inoperative. You're not functioning, not a fact. It's just like the water when it never when it's never turned on. And you never turn on. And just so happen you want to go and turn on. This is how some of us feel. Just so happen you want to be activated that day. You want to go and you want to go on and do what God has called you to do. But you've been inactive. Inactive. Come on, preach. You've been inoperative. So when you begin to turn on you, you want to turn on just like when you turn in the water on. Then I don't know about you, but if you've ever been in places like when you go to that building and turn that water on, it stinks. Yeah. It smells, and everybody can smell you and see you. Like, and they looking at you crazy, and you trying to operate, but you're not operating by spirit and in truth. Because you've been inactive. Come on and give God some word. Go. Listen, there are two, I, I, I pointed out two things. Well, there's, I'm going to give you the scripture to go with it. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Uh, we've read that scripture so many times. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Anybody got it for me? Read it for me. It's kind of warm up here. But we, we've read this scripture so many times. Ephesians 4, chapter, verses 11 through 16. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Come on and give God some glory. Until we operate like God has ordained, I'm not afraid. You're vain. It's in vain. Amen. Because you got to be led by the Spirit. you got to have all the ingredients. Amen. Yeah, and just two things that I pointed out. You to operate to properly function in the body of Christ. you got to have God's Spirit and His Word. Most important, you need Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. 4 through 16. Amen. What happens to the body when it's not adequately taken care of, it dies. Look, he was saying something about being in the green pastures. When you're in some good pasture, you know there's life there. You know something is growing, amen? So what happens 
lives in live. So when you're not operating in full function mode by God's spirit, I'm not working in the unity as God has ordained, it dies. It becomes a ritual. We just we just used to doing this. We just used to doing this. It, it, it's called, what is it, systematic? You're just doing things, you know, you just you're used to doing. And it becomes non-effective. Yeah. Who's growing? Right. Who's growing? Right. Who's being delivered? Right. Who's being set free? Yeah. What change was being broken? Listen, the well-equipped saints do the work of the ministry. And the result is that the body of Christ is built up. How many of you built up? Who are you building up today? The body. The body. It says no time about Greta being built up. It says the body. I need everybody up in here. I need all of y'all. Y'all might not need me, but I need y'all. And some part of my life, even the things that you don't do right, I learned from it. I need you to see you. I need to see you so I can see me. You know what? I gotta, I gotta get right because I can. I can, I know better. The Bible says, so you think that you're something, you're nothing. So when you think you got it all together, God will begin to reveal some stuff to you. He'll begin to show you some things so you, he show you things so you can get in line. Yeah. Well, don't you want personal chastisement? What me, God, chastise me. He gives you a chance to get it right, but then everybody, you did, you want to turn the water on like you so holy, and you know what? You begin to stink. You smell inactive, inoperative. Come on,
want to be shook loose. I just want to be obedient. The blessing is in the obedience. That's when you can become operative. Amen. I don't want to be dull. I don't want to be ineffective. But in order to be effective, I got to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. And they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Look at somebody that said you got to worship him in spirit. You got to worship him in spirit and in truth. Because the truth is going to make you free. And the truth ain't about nobody else. What you see in somebody else. You see so much power in somebody else. What's wrong with you? Jesus Christ. You got it all together. <laughs> have you begun? It was a scripture judge. Or have you begun so perfect in this thing? Who did him the Jew? Paul was telling the Galatians. He said, who did? Who him the Jew? What you have known the truth. How did you go that? I will trust. There you go. <laughs> some ain't adding up. Daddy was saying, go, go back. And I'm going to tell you something. We need, a, we need to have an altar call every fourth or first or third Sunday in the month. Every time for the, for the saints to come back. I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. We need to have an altar call every so, so often. Say, we want to ask all the saints to come to the altar.